thank you. Um, so I will be talking about uh, magnesium diborides in films. And uh, the work is uh, uh, the uh, result of uh, people in my group at uh, Tempo and uh, also collaborations from uh, Anzo from here and uh, Sam uh, Tayagi from uh, Drexel University and Steve Anlager from uh, University of Maryland. Um, so I also uh, acknowledge the uh, support from DOE. So I will do two parts. First uh, parts, I will talk about uh, why uh, we are interested in magnesium diboride and uh, look at the uh, surface resistance gradients and uh, also uh, a very brief survey about the uh, techniques that, has been, that have uh, been very successful in making high quality films. And uh, the second part uh, is kind of a progress report about uh, uh, what uh, is going on in my group. And uh, as many of you might know that I moved uh, from Penn State to Temple a year ago. And uh, although it's, sometimes it's uh, quite uh, frustrating to get things uh, going again, and uh, we are ready to uh, uh, produce films. And uh, uh, first of all, just uh, very briefly introduce magnesium diboride. Uh, um, it's, a, it's a BCS superconductor, so the superconductivity is uh, because the electron phonon coupling, uh, TC40 Kelvin. And uh, w what is special about these uh, materials from the, the other conventional superconductor is that there are two uh, bands, uh, sigma and pi bands, and uh, so there are correspondingly two gaps at uh, a s um, sigma gap at 7 MeV and uh, pi gap at 2 MeV. So these uh, like two other parameters uh, in this uh, superconductor that uh, is responsible for a lot of uh, unique properties of this material. Uh, in, the, in case of the applications, it's very interesting for high field uh, uh, magnets uh, because of the very high upper critical field in this material. And uh, it's uh, interesting for electronic applications for high speed uh, digital circuits, ma mainly because the operating temperature can be uh, 25 Kelvin rather than 4 Kelvin for the uh, niobium circuits. So um, in terms of uh, applications in the uh, uh, superconducting RF cavities, uh, the main reason for its, um, for its uh, promise is, uh, first of all, it's higher TC and uh, uh, bigger gap than niobium, and, uh, and also the uh, low resistivity. And that, that's very important for the uh, uh, possibility of high Q and, uh, and also the uh, short coherence lens, uh, short penetration lens that one can get in these materials. Uh, could uh, lead to higher uh, gradients. So first, um, let's look at the surface resistance. This is uh, just a plot uh, that I took uh, from, from the, uh, uh, the literature that plotted the uh, BCS uh, surface resistance as a function of the uh, TC uh, on the x-axis and uh, the uh, residual resistivity. And uh, these, uh, contours are uh, correspond to different uh, surface resistance value at uh, four, 4K and uh, uh, 500 megahertz. And so um, for if compared to niobium, um, magnesium diboride has a larger gap, energy gap. And uh, so here are the correspond to the uh, uh, smaller gap of uh, magnesium diboride. And the bigger gap will be way out there. And uh, further, because of the uh, uh, low re uh, residual resistivity and the, uh, the lowest value that we have demonstrated in our films uh, is uh, 0 0.1 microm uh, centimeter. And uh, that would uh, place uh, magnesium that wire right here using the uh, value of the pack app, that is uh, two, 2 MeV. Um, so um, even though the, uh, the smaller gap actually is uh, smaller than that of the uh, uh, niobium 310, but uh, the uh, the low surface, uh, the low residual resistivity um, could uh, lead to very very low surface resistance. So uh, the, the, this is just uh, some uh, theoretical prediction from the uh, uh, BCS surface resistance, 
And here is the uh, result uh, of a uh, uh, dielectric resonator uh, measurement uh, that has uh, our films, which is marked by uh, HPCVD, these uh, triangles, uh, as well as uh, films from uh, other sources uh, that the group at uh, Ulich measured. And uh, so uh, th this plot includes uh, two sets of data. One is for 15 Kelvin, and the other is for uh, 20 Kelvin. And uh, basically, you can see that as a function of the uh, residual resistivity, uh, the uh, uh, surface resistance decrease on the uh, residual resistivity resistance uh, resistivity uh, decrease. And uh, so if we look at the uh, film that we have produced uh, in, in this data, it's, it's about one micron centimeter, and we have uh, 230 micron at uh, 15 Kelvin and 18 gigahertz. So if you use uh, omega square to scale it to uh, 500 megahertz, that will be like 180 nano ohm at uh, 15 Kelvin. And so if, if we take some uh, published data to uh, see when you go from 15 Kelvin to 4 Kelvin, uh, how much uh, uh, smaller surface resistance you can gain, uh, it turns out that uh, you could get as much as 20 times reduction in surface resistance. And uh, so that would uh, give uh, a value of about uh, uh, eight, uh, 9 uh, nano ohm at, uh, at a 4K and, uh, and a half gigahertz. So that's already. Um, um, some improvement compared to uh, Niobium. And that actually there are um, real data that's measured uh, by Dan Oates at the uh, MIT Lincoln Lab uh, using a uh, uh, dialect, the, the uh, strip line resonator technique uh, at two gigahertz. So th this is the data uh, that they uh, put together comparing the Niobium film that they have uh, deposited with the uh, uh, magnesium diboride films, uh, those are provided by uh, uh, SCT, uh, Brian Merkley, uh, and STI, uh, STI by, by, by reactive coevaporation. Co so you can see that the, uh, the surface resistance um, is, of course, lower uh, in, in all these temperatures above 4K. And uh, in this particular case, it's, a, it's a comparable to uh, niobium uh, at 4K. So these are the low, uh, low, uh, low power measurement. And uh, here is the, uh, the high power measurement, the power dependence. Uh, this is the um, dielectric uh, substrate. This is a um, metal substrate. And, and uh, it's also showing very uh, nice uh, uh, property. So um, the, uh, in a very clean magnesium dibora film, it's possible that we could get uh, lower surface resistance uh, compared to that of uh, niobium. And I believe, uh, Suyashi, you have some uh, new data that, that shows better uh, surface resistance compared to niobium. Um, of course, uh, in general, it's not necessarily the cleaner uh, the materials, the, uh, the low, uh, lower the surface resistance. And uh, like as shown in these uh, results for the uh, niobium and uh, niobium on copper, actually you will have a minimum when you make the mean free pass uh, longer, it actually uh, uh, increase. And uh, uh, similar results are shown here that uh, it's not necessary. You, may, you really want to make it very, very, very uh, clean. And uh, in terms of the uh, MGB2 result I show, uh, the, uh, what we have uh, in that uh, uh, dielectric resonator measurement um, we, we are about where the uh, minimum is. So uh, about uh, one micron centimeter, that might be uh, what we want uh, to, to uh, make the film clean. Uh, even more cleaner may or may not be better. <laughs> the other benefit of magnesium diboride is a possible uh, maximum acceleration field. And uh, so for that, uh, we, we don't really have real data uh, to, to show, but we can do some estimate by uh, getting the uh, uh, coherent lens in the uh, magnesium diboride from the HC2 measurement. And uh, I have shown earlier that we, we have the uh, uh, penetration depth measurement by this group at, uh, at Ulysses, 
in the uh, dielectric resonator. Um, you, you can see that uh, the uh, more clean the sample is, the uh, shorter the uh, coherence length. And we have got uh, uh, the result of uh, 40 nanometer in our films. And this number actually agrees with uh, our, our measurement in the Josephson junctions. Uh, we have made the Josephson junctions of magnesium diboride. And uh, from the uh, magnetic field dependence of the uh, critical current, the Fraunhofer pattern, we can also estimate the uh, coherence length. And we got uh, about uh, 40 nanometers in our uh, films as well. So if you take this value, it will give you a, a couple of about uh, six. And, uh, and then if you use this uh, expression for, for uh, thermodynamic uh, critical field, you'll get uh, things like uh, 800 uh, millitesla, which is uh, much larger than the HC for niobium, which is uh, 200 millitesla. Uh, uh, of course, this probably is close to the most optimistic estimate. And in reality, there may be other issues. Uh, for example, there are uh, two gaps which uh, could have, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Alex will tell you that, that actually that could be a problem. Uh, you may or may not be able to get that high uh, value. And uh, so at least the, uh, the coherence lens and the penetration depths uh, are all different for uh, sigma bands and, uh, and uh, pi bands. So that's something that need to be uh, studied. But uh, in terms of experimental data, uh, at least we can find that uh, in the literature that uh, for powder magnesium diboride, uh, the uh, specific heat measurement has shown that the, uh, the thermodynamic uh, critical field uh, it can be as high as uh, 300 millitesla. So that's the uh, experiment, the experimental data and uh, from this paper. And also in this paper, it shows, um, uh, it measured uh, the uh, magnetization of uh, magnesium diboride single crystal. And uh, from here we can find uh, um, a bunch of uh, uh, materials properties. Uh, for example, here we can see that the uh, penetration depth for the AB plane in that uh, uh, sample is uh, 80 uh, nanometer. And uh, we can find the, uh, uh, we can find the thermodynamic uh, uh, critical field uh, to be about uh, 280 tesla and uh, a millitesla. And uh, so th these 350, 280, these are the experimental data. So at least uh, uh, from this early data, from uh, 2001 and 2002, which is fairly close to the time when it's, it was uh, discovered, uh, we already see that uh, it, it should definitely be higher than that of uh, niobium. Uh, how much higher? Whether it really can go to 800 uh, millitesla, that's something to be, uh, to be seen. And uh, for, from all this collection of data, we can also see that the, uh, the HC1 uh, is about uh, 20 millitesla in these uh, single crystal uh, samples. Um, the other problem 